Welcome back everyone, I'm Capelys Games, this is EVE Online, you see before you a Phenox Battle Cruiser, and that means it's time for a level 3 mission. And the level 3 mission we're doing today is Serpentus Extravaganza. Now this is a good one. As you can tell from the name, it is indeed against Serpentus Pirates, so that means we need to tank for Kinetic and Thermal and also deal Kinetic damage if we can. That's fine, we are a Ferox. We fire Kinetic and Thermal ammunition, so that's going to be absolutely perfect. We're being paid a whopping 791,000 ISK and 2,297 loyalty points for completing this mission, with an extra 653,000 if we complete the mission within 5 hours and 22 minutes. As you can tell from the length of the time bonus and the amount of money we're being paid, this is one of the bigger and better level 3 missions. So this is going to be good. It's in Adrel, which I believe is one system over. Yeah, a little bit of travel time, but that's not going to be a problem. Let's click accept and see how long this takes. Here we are in the mission system on the way to the mission. As always, I shall turn on the two shield hardeners and we will make a decision about what to load the tracking computer with when we land on grid and see at what range everything is. And speaking of range, we are going to turn on the tactical overlay so we can see all the range numbers. The red dotted line on the outside is our maximum targeting range. When we mouse over the weapons, we see the inner ring for the optimal range and the outer ring for the fall off range. Helps you make decisions about what to do with your ammunition and tracking computers. And we have an acceleration gate, so we're going to be dropped off in the first room at a predetermined range from everything. Warp drive active. I believe there are multiple reinforcement spawns in each of the three rooms of this mission. If I'm remembering it correctly, it's been a very long time since I did level three Serpentis extravaganza. Yep, lots of bad guys. And they're all at um, a fairly long range, so what if we put the optimal range script on, turned it on. Yeah, okay, we'll do this lot because they're the closest. And then we'll just do everything in ascending order of distance. Look, quite a few battle cruisers here. That's definitely a sign of a good level 3 mission. Most level 3 missions barely feature any kind of battle cruisers at all. Again, it's taking forever to lock up frigates because, again, this particular fit on this particular ship has no sensor booster or signal amplifier or um, targeting speed rig so it's painful trying to target frigates but we shall survive we shall cope let's just put one gun on everything until they die and there we go then we'll just instantly change to the battle cruisers Oh, there's a couple more frigates over here. With everything being spread out, the Noctis is going to take some time to tractor beam it all. It's not all so far away that you can't... that nothing will be in range, but it's just a little bit annoying. So let's bookmark this wreck right in the middle of the room. Make the Noctis's life a little bit more easy. And as you saw there, we had the first reinforcement wave. It was these f um, four frigates up here, which are at a decent range. So now we'll get rid of these two cruisers. Uh, no, no, we won't. The frigates have noticed us now. They're yellow box, which means they're on approach. So we'll get rid of them next. We we'll just split our fire between the groups. Why not? It's almost all a the frigates dead. Run out of charges. And we've run out of ammo just before we killed it. Oh well. There we go. Right, let's um, reload. Right, let's group all the guns, reload to Thorium, and I'm going to change over to the tracking speed script. Just going to kill this one cruiser first. So the range of that is now 78. As soon as that guy dies, we'll change over to optimal range script. I can't really be bothered to move. Because I'm sitting right on top of the acceleration gate, I really can't be bothered to move. I'd rather just stay here. Because with the optimal range script, the falloff range is now 92 kilometers, which is why we're absolutely wrecking this battle cruiser from 72. 
And quite like to get rid of these little frigates next, so let's do that. There they go. Thorium ammunition is really good. I like it a lot. And um, we've been sensor damped, that's annoying. Well, if you're still in range, I'm just going to shoot you. I don't care. We might as well take the time to destroy all the missile batteries as well. They're not going to take long, and they'll give us a little bit of money. So we might as well do a full clear, and that frigate just, like, repaired almost all of its armour straight away. Because, indeed, they are elite. If you let these frigates get too close in this mission, they will warp, jam, and web you. And that's quite rare in level 3 missions, so do be careful about these guys. Let's just get rid of these missile batteries. Not that they're firing at us, because we're too far away for them to hit us, which is nice. That's one. And it dropped a cargo container, which of course will be 100 rounds of some random light missile type. Now the cruiser's noticed. And it's on direct approach, so we'll hit it absolutely perfectly. It's usually after I say that, we miss our first few shots. Let's see. No, we're all hitting. Grazing. Oh, there's some smashes and penetrates. That's good. Aha, a reinforcement wave and that guy died. The reinforcement triggers in this, it seems to be like each group has a reinforcement wave after it. I mean, I was pretty blasé about just killing everything in, in a random order, and we never really got overwhelmed. Not like the blockade, where you kill one ship and an entire new room of bad guys appears. This is much more forgiving in its reinforcement waves. A module has run is he going to die before these last two guns run out of ammo? Yes, good. In that case, we'll reload the other two. Only takes five seconds to reload, of course. Hybrid weapons are nice. I'm going to just smash this guy. I'm going to turn the tracking computer off and reload it with the tracking speed script. Just in preparation for the next room. I mean, the fall of range is still 78, even with the tracking speed script loaded, so... Thorium is nice. Thorium may be nice, but I'm going to reload to antimatter. For maximum damage as soon as we get into the second room, which we're going to right now. Warp drive active. Room one done. Just check that the bookmark took and it did. And this appears to just be um, some gun turrets and one cruiser. And they're Mark II gun turrets, so we're going to have to get rid of them first. They're actually more dangerous than the cruiser is. We should be hitting them alright because we're at even though it's under our guns, which means it's below our optimal range, they are, of course, immovable objects, so their angular velocity is zero. So anything that's closer than optimal range is negatively affected. If it's moving, it makes it harder to hit. That's why, ideally, you'll fight between your optimal range and your fall-off range. You don't really want to be inside your optimal. But it's okay with stationary targets, as we see. We're not missing them at all. Because we're not moving, and they're not moving. This cruiser is moving. We'll see the difference when I start shooting at that. We'll probably miss quite a few shots. Or we'll get a wreck straight away. Uh, okay. It seems that we're tracking this thing absolutely. Think. Penetrate, penetrate, smash, wreck, smash. Well, I was not expecting that. Was not expecting that at all. Um, we should bookmark this one wreck to get that one wreck and that one cargo container when we complete the mission. But that is room two done in about 45 seconds. Warp drive active. Onwards to room three. I was expecting us to miss that cruiser because he was at only 9,000 meters and orbiting us. But because we had a tracking computer with a tracking speed script and I've got really high skills, the railguns managed to track it absolutely fine. Okay, looks like there's three figures right up in our business. That's not good. I don't like that. 
Okay, this is the final room. Oh, well, we can tell that because there's no acceleration gates. I'm going to shoot these cruisers. Wait for these frigates to aggress me on their own. And then I'll spit the drones out and the drones can take care of these guys. They're close enough that I can recall the drones like pretty much instantly if they get aggressed. Which I'm expecting them to be aggressed. So get that veteran first. Because that veteran is an elite frigate. He has not got elite resists but he does warp jam and web. As we can see he is webbing us. So we'll get the drones to kill him first and then I'll do the two guards and safeguards. Then we'll just take everything else in order of dis distance. Drones have killed that one already, that's good. Nicely done, gentlemen. When this cruiser dies, I'm probably going to reload to Thorium. Right, bring the drones back, we don't need them to be out anymore. No, when the other cruiser dies, the one that's at 45 kilometers. We'll reload to Thorium after that one. Simply again, because I cannot be bothered to move the ship. Or will I? No, I'm just going to approach the boss at the back of the room. Turn the micro warp drive on. We'll just close the range that way. Being a little bit too lazy today, I think. So we'll put three guns on each of the frigates. Who are pretty much directly approaching, so we should hit them fine. Once the range shortens, at least. Yep. See, as soon as we got between Optimal and Falloff, we just absolutely annihilated them. And the same for this guy. He will go down nice and easy. And there he goes. Then we'll just aggress this lot up here. No reinforcements yet in this particular pocket. And I think we're close enough to the boss to come to a halt. Turn the mic won't drive off. We're missing quite a lot because we're moving really quickly run out of sideways to the enemy a ship. Has run out of charges. But as soon as we halted, that that really helped because we're no longer moving quite so fast. And they're on direct approach to us, so that also helps. The boss doesn't seem too concerned about me killing all those bodyguards, so I'm just going to continue doing that. We're missing rather a lot. Even though he's with, between fall off and optimal. That one is actually orbiting us because it's a red box. We should hit the yellow box one a lot easier because that's still on direct approach to us and not moving sideways. You should see a difference in the quality of hits and the number of hits. There we are. Barely any misses. There's a few there. Yeah, we're hitting them a little bit better. Getting some penetrates and smashing hits. Right, jolly good. Let's just approach the boss. Don't need to bother with the micro warp drive anymore. We don't need to approach him that quickly. I'm just approaching him to reduce the range and the angular velocity. He comes. He's only a battle cruiser. He's got a name, but he's not elite. He's just a perfectly regular battle cruiser. He's only worth 153,750 esk in bounty, so he's not that great. I don't think he's going to drop anything good either. And that's it. Mission complete. Nice. Just make sure we did book mark a wreck. Yes, we did. And away we go. Warp drive active. That was significantly easier than I thought it was going to be. Still, it's nice to have three rooms of enemies. Well, we can't really call room two a, a full room, can we? It's two rooms of enemies and one room of absolutely nothing. Right, made it back into the agent station nice and safe, so let's complete the mission. And that was 18 minutes from the time we clicked accept to the time we clicked complete. Not bad for three rooms. So I shall go and grab the Noctis, undock, grab all the loot and salvage, and I'll bring you back when that's been done and the bounty has hit her wallet. Right, the Noctis has returned from its highly profitable excursion, so let's see how much we made from this mission. Agent pay 791,000 isk. Time bonus 653,000. Bounty 2,974,133 isk. Loot a whopping 12.3 million isk. Valuable items, which is items worth over 250,000. This 5 mega newton micro watt drive worth 392,000. This heavy stasis grappler worth 1.27. 
and one of our old friends, the Want Destruction Fuel Generator, worth 4.8 million, and a whopping 15 units of contaminated Lorentz fluid from the salvage. At 253,000 per unit, that is a 3.79 million ISK. The rest of the salvage, if we ignore the Lorentz fluid, the rest of the salvage still adds up to 624,000, so that's pretty good. And we even found a pirate tag. A Serpentus Electrum tag. It's only worth 4,000 ISK, but it's a tag, and you know, that's good. We've got some Antimatter Charge M, which will go in the Ferox, and we've got some Thorium Charge M, which will go in the Ferox, so thank you for that. And when we add that to the 2,297 loyalty points, and multiply those by 1,000, add them on to everything else, we get just over 19 million ISK. Not bad for 18 minutes' work. That works out around 60 million ISK an hour. That was a decent mission. I know quite a lot of it. We did get 10.3 million worth of loot just from the valuable items. So, um, you know, the loot being 12.3 million and 10.3 of it comes from these four items. RNG was very much in our favour today. It may not be in the next mission, but come back and see where that next mission is and whether or not we get lucky again. Until then, do look after yourself, and I'll talk to you again soon.